the properties of these scales. So now um, this session will be definitely an enlightening session for all of us. And now I hand over the uh, session to Dr. Rajesh Kumar, Associate Professor, College of Nursing, Ames Rishikis. Thank you, Dr. Belsi, madam. Now <clears throat> it's time to introduce the speaker for the day. Uh, we have on the board Dr. Ratish Nair. Uh, he is a very well, very well known faculty and a non nursing person from South to North. And uh, this person hardly required any introduction at this platform. Uh, I also attest to this person since very long time, since uh, I think if, if I will say that uh, since the beginning of nursing and uh, He's a great mentor and great teacher and a great administrator, I should say that. So there has worked on different role. Uh, rather than being in education, he is more you know, busy in the administration, uh, handling different administrative issues and uh, making the things you know, more comfortable for the subordinates. Uh, now today's sessions is very special because uh, whatever, going to, whatever Sir is going to talk about the uh, scale development that is very a fundamental task for the BSc as well as MSc nursing students, even for the PhD nursing students sometimes. Uh, sometimes students are not able to understand the concept of the scale very well and the different dimension as well. So uh, we expect sir to explain the things in a very simplified and user-friendly approach so that student can take a, uh, you know, a enlightening message from this platform and can start utilizing the things uh, in their day-to-day -day life or day-to-day -day academic work. So we will, without wasting much of time, uh, I welcome Dr. Ratish Nair, sir, for uh, begin with 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 her, her with her, with his talk and uh, enlighten the you know audience. So, sir, the session is yours. Thank you, Dr. Rajesh. Rajesh, uh, uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Smriti Arora and uh, Dr. Belsi for facilitating this. Uh, 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 program and uh, for inviting me to uh, conduct uh, this session and uh, attitude scales and uh, measurements evaluation these things are uh, 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 very basic uh, in case of uh, nursing research and I am sure uh, I could see uh, many of the uh, participants as uh, PG students, uh, I could recognize few of them, and I'm sure faculty members are also there. And this is one of uh, as a student from a student point of view. We when we think about as a student, I am just imagining myself uh, sitting and attending the classes uh, of measurement evaluation and uh, these topics. As we uh, initially for maybe for the first uh, class, we find it to be Greek and Latin because many times measurement and evaluation comes as a very dry topic to us. But once you could, uh, you uh, develop interest in some of the things, probably this is something which is very interesting. And uh, I'll try to make it, I have tried to make uh, the presentation as short as possible and as simple as possible because I expect this to be an exchange rather than a one-way traffic where uh, I'm just going to read out the slides and you just go home or uh, disable your video and go somewhere uh, rather than because in between I can see the name so I'll be able to call out people so that I am sure I'm not alone here so uh, let us uh, so look at uh, uh, the topic uh, before uh, starting maybe I, we can uh, start uh, sharing uh, the slides just a moment give me just a moment so uh, in case while we talk about attitude uh, scales, uh, when when we talk about attitude scale or even just attitude, uh, the first thing which comes to our mind, especially nurses, nurse educators. Uh, and excuse nurses, me, sir. Yes. Sir, uh, have you shared this slide? No, no, I haven't. Achha, achha. I haven't. If there is any trouble, then I'll, 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 I'll get the help of you. Don't worry. Okay, so uh, okay. 
maybe once once a slide is visible just let me know if it's visible or not uh, it is visible yes, okay all right visible all right all right make it as a slide show sir okay all right i'll do that i'll do that i'll do that this is just it's all right now yes, sir. It's fine. okay all right so uh, once uh, because uh, the, while we are talking about measurement of attitudes nurse educators nurse pg students of nursing the first thing comes to our mind will be like a scale and uh, these are some of the uh, scales which are used extensively in many of the nursing research studies and there are uh, there are advantages and disadvantages for both uh, but in case of uh, measuring of attitudes and beliefs uh, it is not just used uh, for nursing studies and if you uh, have a look at in general uh, how these are used you can just imagine about uh, you are going to a supermarket and while coming out they hand you a paper uh, with few of the items listed and you are uh, asked to tick or score and there are uh, you will find uh, uh, to be a likert scale maybe of 7 or 10 point likert scale where you are uh, how satisfied are you with uh, the services offered by a particular uh, shopping mall and so these are some of the scales or uh, measure, scales of measurement which are used very very extensively and uh, in case of in case if you are uh, the this these are scales which are used extensively in case of management as, as well as uh, sociological studies and uh, if you if you look at uh, them, uh, there are ex they are extremely advantages, and you are able to. There are so many advantages, but at the same time, they have few disadvantages as well. So, in case of uh, attitude scales, while we are talking about, we will be talking about different types of attitude scales. Uh, how are they used? How are they created? And how good are they in measuring what they are expected to measure? So, uh, in case of uh, there are many types of scales and scaling techniques, and we have to choose the most appropriate technique to choose uh, the research which we are intending to do. The statements uh, contained therein have to be prepared in such a way that. Uh, the answers received can easily be converted to numerical values because in the end uh, it's you are going to go for it is uh, you are going to use this for uh, creating uh, uh, quantitative data and you need to analyze uh, what information or what measurement you have done uh, <clears throat> the most commonly used there are three co most commonly used uh, scales we will be looking at that uh, during the course of uh, the presentation so uh, The first attitude scale, we can say, uh, while we're looking at it, uh, the primary intention, why we are going to have an attitude scale and whether to measure the state of mind of the respondents. That is mainly what the purpose is mostly of any attitude scale. You are, you are looking at measuring uh, the mind of the respondents. And uh, many times it is uh, attitudes and beliefs comes, uh, you can look at uh, it's a very complex uh, intersection, but in case of uh, uh, sociological research or even psychological research, many of the times attitudes, there is one confusion which happens many times that is you measure attitude and uh, the researcher or the person who is doing the study uh, sometimes confused it with the attitude is confused with behavior and but uh, predicting pre I'm sorry, uh, attitude is uh, confused with predicting of behavior, which actually is very different. So uh, the challenges to be considered while using attitude scale, the verification is uh, difficult. Researcher can, can't observe the state of mind like uh, preferences, likes and dislikes. Inability to determine answer tells truth of liking or dislike. Think about your liking features. It's about uh, whether it's uh, going to be a tablet or a TV. It is like, just like uh, yes or no questions. If you look at uh, the scale, we'll be looking at what kind of scale comes uh, with an yes or no choice. The trick of attitude measurement. There are uh, three uh, tricks of attitude measurement. One of them is 
uh, confront with favorable and unfavorable statements, find extent of agreement or disagreement, understanding human behavior and influencing in given direction. The issues to be addressed while you are looking at using an attitude scale or creating one, uh, that is what has to be measured, who is to be measured, the accuracy desired in measurement, the pose permissible, choices available in the measurement or data collection techniques. So what has to be measured? I, I think I'm sure uh, the students and faculty might be remembering uh, the thing about validity and reliability of any measuring instrument. So that has to be uh, cleared off, uh, cleared off uh, first instance itself. And who is to be measured? Who uh, in the sense it is going to be the study population is being referred to as who? The accuracy desired in the measurement and how accurate you want it to be. And because this is somewhere uh, towards the scoring key and what is uh, to be uh, graded and the grading of the score, what you are going to get at the end of the measurement. That is what is accuracy and the cost permissible, how uh, financially uh, expensive is going to be this the use of such an attitude scale. If, if you are going to uh, use an attitude scale, it is... Uh, whether it is available uh, in the open market or whether uh, it is going, you are going to uh, create a scale for to be used of your own. What has to be measured? Selecting relevant attributes, assessing relevant attributes or qualities of a product. Not every attribute could be measured because it is not every attribute could be measured uh, by using an attitude scale. Researcher uh, needs to settle for relevant one relatable to response of subjects, guiding events, in-depth interviews and projective techniques. In case of in-depth interviews, those who are associated with uh, qualitative research will be uh, able to let you know how uh, a complex that process is. And in case of in-depth interviews, respondents encouraged to talk about product and salient attributes are chosen. Projective techniques attempt to uncover information in an uh, indirect manner, that is example, cartoon test, word association test, sentence completion test. You can even think about an ink plot test, which is used in psychology. Who is to be measured? The people. The measurement uh, procedure must be designed with the characteristics of the respondents under uh, consideration, like aspects of their education, age, sex, occupation, religion. Example, sending a mail questionnaire for, uh, if suppose, for example, you are going to send a mail questionnaire to a group of uh, respondents who is not interested or maybe even hostile, would hardly be a right choice as a research instrument. You can look at uh, that because many times uh, these days uh, you get hundreds of emails which are which you are not even least bothered even to answer or even to open and have just one look at many of them are uh, at uh, based on uh, these kind of attitude measurements or belief measurements of either customers or prospective customers which uh, is done by any industry which is uh, looking to do business so uh, so it's hardly if it is sending a mail questionnaire for disinterested or hostile respondents would hardly be the right choice as a research instrument. The choice of techniques. Uh, questionnaire method is one of the most commonly used uh, method. Observation method is also could be, uh, observation methods also could be adopted as a choice of uh, technique. The approaches of measuring attitudes are as follows. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> Self-report inventories using psychological measures, projective techniques like thematic uh, perception test. And while you are looking at an attitude measurement scale, uh, we have to look at uh, an in-depth knowledge of uh, the scale itself or uh, the criterion which you are intending to measure. Because as a researcher, if you are uh, totally, this happens many times because many of the research studies use uh, data collection uh, assistance or maybe a research fellow, but uh, 
the research study which is you are going to use uh, the person who are, who is going to interpret the research should have an accurate or an in-depth knowledge about the criteria in which you are going to measure and uh, in case of uh, a cost and accuracy you need to uh, look at uh, there may be an attitude scale which is available which is of uh, very very uh, less expensive but it may not give you an accurate measurement so you have to balance two things one is the cost of the measuring instrument and the accuracy of the score which you uh, desire it is totally up to the researcher to identify an instrument if the person is uh, the researcher is unable to create one of uh, his or her own because creating an attitude scale itself is uh, a research in itself so many times you and a researcher who is intended to measure an attitude or belief of something would prefer to use a scale which is already existing because of time constraints or because of uh, maybe uh, the um, specialist person not available to create an attitude scale the researcher may not be uh, qualified enough to create and validate and standardize an attitude scale by himself or herself. The types, uh, when we are looking at the types of rating scale, uh, you uh, can see there are a uh, few types which we'll be looking at in the following slides. The first one which we would like to discuss will be the nominal scales where categorization of responses into a number of mutually exclusive categories no relationships between the categories that is no ranking or ordering uh, then example uh, in case of classification of responses by social class like or dislike yes or no that is a sex or gender and so on the statistical operation possible for nominally scaled data is counting only in case of an ordinal scale, the respondents to rank some alternatives by some common variable that is feasibility for a user product to be ranked from best to the worst. <clears throat> Here, it is not like yes or no or uh, uh, like or dislike, but you are asked to rank uh, certain choices according to your order of preference. So. Uh, in case this is difficulty to quantify the amount of differences between the ranks. Uh, if you are given uh, eight choices, the choice, eighth choice and the seventh choice, the uh, preferences of percentage between eight and seven may be different from that of between six and seven. So that is difficult to measure in between differences between the ranks and possible to compute positional statistical measure like median and mode for such data. <clears throat> and uh, for an example, a ranking of three brands of pasteurized milk by a group of consumers on the basis of the perceived quality. You can take any, uh, uh, maybe uh, the consumer ranking of anything uh, in this ordinal scale because for a consumer there are many available options and most of the time they are asked to rank between and many times you will see this in news or maybe even uh, sometimes even the most latest example could be hand sanitizers because we just got out of uh, a world which was uh, uh, totally almost shut down due to covid and people had were looking uh, at hand sanitizers uh, more lovingly than uh, to their loved ones most of the time. So uh, there were uh, so much of research data even on uh, the TV advertisement about the preferences of hand sanitizers, which brand a person or maximum number of people prefer. So these kind of rankings, uh, the ordinal scale is used. In case of an interval scale, the deficiencies of the nominal and ordinal scales are taken care in the interval scale. The scale has an arbitrary zero point with numbers placed at equally appearing intervals. The number of statistical operations, including addition, subtraction, and computation of the mean can be done. The nominal and ordinal type of scales are used in attitude measurement. The simplest possible type of such scale has the respondent classifying the object or issue or product or himself into 
one among two dichotomous categories. Provision of additional alternatives denoting the degrees of liking or disliking. Listed in sequence so that alternatives from a type of scale form a type of scale. These scales are basically self report inventories with a list of favorable and unfavorable statements towards the subject. The attitude measurement scales can be categorized into unidimensional and multidimensional scales. Deterministic attitude measurement models, the Gutman scale, in case of uh, Gutman scale, also known as cumulative scaling or scalogram analysis, is an ordinal type scale where statements are arranged in a hierarchical order so that someone who agrees with one item will also agree with lower order, easier or less extreme items. We will have an example in the following slide. Uh, how uh, we are going to arrange uh, these uh, statements in hierarchical order, that is uh, lower, easier, or less extreme items. It is the items are arranged based on their, how extreme they are. So this is like maybe people who are uh, uh, studying psychiatry might know there is a systematic desensitization, which is almost uh, talked about for uh, as a treatment uh, method for uh, a therapy method for phobia and uh, you can see it is less uh, the order of severity is going to increase as you uh, go down so each statement has a perfect relationship of one type or the another with particular dimension of the attitude being investigated in case of this gutman scale while we are looking at uh, the the severity and the responses uh, from the participant if you are looking at that, maybe uh, after answering, we'll have an example and where uh, you will see uh, if you answer one as yes, then it may be uh, here it is. So uh, in case the items, these are some. this is an example uh, for a Gutman scale where the order is the arrangement of the statements uh, is done in such a way that the severity of uh, severe uh, extremity or severity of the item is increasing as you pass one, two, three, four. Uh, the first item, if you look at it, it says, I am willing to be near a cat. So you answer yes or no. And I am willing to have a cat, yes or no. I love to have a cat, yes or no. And I am willing to touch a cat. So in this case, uh, what I wanted to tell you in, while discussing the previous slide was is what is highlighted in red. If the respondent disagrees, for example, with statement four, having agreed with statement one, two, three, then the respondent will disagree with statement five and higher as these represent more extreme expressions of the attitude being investigated or measured. While looking at, again, the government scale, Usually it applied to dichotomous data, that is the data with only two values, yes or no, or zero or one, agree or disagree, like, dislike, uh, and so on. The disadvantages is uh, construction of the scale requires a lot of time and effort because it is, this, while looking at the scale, you might think it is, uh, it's very easy and simple, but it is not very simple because uh, the you it takes time for you to arrange uh, the items according to the how extreme they are and how you should arrange the scale and it, it totally depends on what you are intending to measure and this are only a few items existing that may fit the model gives only gross distinction among respondents such scales seldom have more than equal to construct. Thurston's equal uh, appear, appearing interval scale, interested in scaling respondents and not statements. The first step is the scale, the attitude statements along the attitude continuum. Statements are printed on cards and judges are asked to sort the statement into 11 groups. Extreme uh, piles represent the most favorable and the most unfavorable statement. Judges are expected to make the intervals between the groups equal. Mean rating by judges is taken as the scale point for each item. Ambiguous or irrelevant items are dropped. 
item selected for the final scalar each item has a small standard deviation of ratings over judges mean ratings spread evenly from one end of the rating continuum to the another selected items are listed in a random order to form the final scale that is how a Thurston's equal appearing interval scale is constructed so here we look at one of the example developing an age attitude scale develop an 80 to 100 statements on age like people get aids by engaging in immoral behavior you can get aids from toilet seats aids is the wrath of god anybody with aids is either gay or a junkie and in case this, this is how you are going to construct 80 statements 80 to 100 statements and the participants or the judges rate each statement on a scale of 1 to 11. 1 to be the least favorable to the concept and 11 to be the most favorable to the concept. Thurston's equal appearing interval scale also uh, says the each statement you need to compute the median and interquartile range to facilitate the final selection of items for your scale. You might want to sort the table of medians and interquartile range in ascending order by median and within that in descending order by interquartile range. For administration of a Thurston equal appearing uh, interval scale, respondents uh, need to later to mark only the items with which he or she agrees and which means the uh, respondent might even skip few items which they don't want to respond you already have got 80 to 100 items so the hardly matters if uh, the respondent is going to uh, skip few items the test scale are prepared with an odd number of positions the usual number being 11. the score of the respondent then is taken as the scale value of the median item endorsed or the average scale value of the items endorsed for example, a respondent agrees with items which have a scale values as 9, 10, and 11. This would imply uh, that he has a favorable attitude to the object or uh, the criterion being measured. Assuming that score of 11 implies most positive attitude. Uh, while I think uh, initially itself we said uh, it is uh, the score 11 means the most uh, favorable one and one means the least uh, favorable one. So <clears throat> drawbacks or disadvantages of Thurston scale. It's a high uh, time requirement. Uh, it is a tedious job. Influencing of scale positions by the attitude of the judges. No information on the degree of intensity of agreement with the different items. So that is, uh, these are the three disadvantages while you are using a thirst to equal appearing interval scale. Other uh, types of scales which we'll be discussing will be uh, the semantic differential scales, which again is also very commonly used in case of uh, studies in nursing. And uh, this, the semantic uh, differential scales use it's, it's, it's a collection of rating scales anchored by bipolar adjectives, flexible approach uh, to obtaining measures of attitudes. The object that is rated is called the concept. Almost anything can be rated, including family planning, cosmetic, political parties, etc. The semantic uh, difference scale is based on a seven point rating scale for each of a number of attributes relating to the research topic. The extreme point uh, represent the bipolar adjectives with the central category representing neutral. And in the semantic referential scale, only the extremes have names. The in between categories have either blank space or sometimes a number. So in case, uh, for example, in a semantic difference scale, uh, one end is good, the other end is bad, and in between you are not bothered about what is uh, the, what does the respondent react to it. So in this case, this is an example uh, of 
uh, you are going to judge oranges by these uh, criteria, like it is healthy, good tasting, expensive, pleasant, and messy. So this is uh, just an example of a response from a part of, from uh, a participant while uh, one uh, says it is the healthy, it is a uh, good and good tasting again it is uh, the most favorable one as good and while it is expensive you can say it is going towards uh, the other end and it is not nowhere near good and it is pleasant and it is kind of messy where the person has uh, chose to uh, take up a neutral uh, view about uh, how he or she thinks about oranges so in case of semantic uh, differential scales, if you look at, there are positive and negative statements. There are positive and negative statements and the statement expressing the things to describe the object. The negative phrase is sometimes put on the left side of the scale, sometimes on the right prevents a respondent with a positive attitude from simply checking either the left or right hand sides without reading and describing the words. This is also something which is uh, very, very common in case of a uh, male questionnaire. And because in person, it, it is quite uh, different because uh, the person is, the respondent is right in front of you. Or this also happens when you are catching a respondent while the person is not prepared to do the job. And uh, maybe it is again, uh, what happens is uh, you are try. you have just, for example, you have just finished shopping, you are about to exit uh, the shopping mall and you are in a hurry to go to the parking lot and uh, the door attendant hands you a list, a paper with few questions. So what happens is your, your uh, reaction to it, the first sentence you say to grade it on one to uh, 10 on a grade, if suppose for example, it is an attitude or belief scale, which is given to you uh, just to check maybe the customer satisfaction, that is what they most often check. So uh, you are given, it again depends on uh, the mindset of the respondent because uh, you finish shopping, you are carrying your shopping bags and you are heading towards the parking and the door attendant hands you a small paper with you have to uh, rate the customer satisfaction based on few items listed. So you read the first item and what happens next is you got an idea what exactly are because if it is going to be a positive statement, the most uh, safer, the most uh, safe method is to go for a central tendency most of the time because one thing is you are less on time and uh, you have very less time available you are not in a mood to fill out a survey and you want to leave as soon as possible so you take the safest bet that is go for a central tendency and so in this case uh, in case of a semantic differential scale it's always better you have uh, the items not being, uh, as I said, the positive and negative statements, and it is better to avoid that kind of a possibility where somebody is going to uh, attend to your survey or an attitude scale with a central tendency response. Uh, so that can be avoided. In case of, uh, while we're talking about uh, summative models, also called as like at scales, which is, I think, I'm sure uh, most of the people who have worked in hospitals and uh, the nursing officers as uh, nursing staff, you have worked in hospitals will have, there is a, there's a certain scale, which is with almost every single corporate hospital while is a part of the discharge planning, where you give out uh, a like a scale mostly to uh, the patient and as well as patient uh, attendants or family members. So the individual items in a scale are monotonically related to the underlying attributes and a summation of the item score is related linearly to the 
attitude. The total score, combined score, the total score is the combined scores of individual items. For negative attitude statement, the score is reversed. The scale allows an expression of the intensity of the feeling. For example, agree to disagree to strongly agree to strongly disagree. This could be the range. Likert scale, uh, these days, I think Likert scales have become more uh, attractive uh, because of use of smileys, or maybe uh, these days you can say, uh, you, maybe the pain perception scales uh, you can see, and here this is, uh, th these are some of the uh, phases which are used in these days. Uh, I, I'm sure uh, in case of schools, they use these kind of scales uh, very often. And also, except in pain, pain scales, I have not seen uh, many of uh, these kind of scales which are used in case of nursing studies. So, but <clears throat> the steps in uh, yeah, steps of creating a Likert scale, the statements concerning attitudinal object, positive or negative, is even divided somebody somebody's unmute uh, could you mute yourself priyanka katuri can you just mute yourself thank you assign scale uh, administer the pool of statements to a similar group assign scale value to disagree of agreement or disagreement either one two three four five or plus one, plus two, zero, minus one, minus two, and reverse scoring for negative items. And there has to be an item analysis of a Likert scale. In case of uh, the statements are pruned and positive and negative ones are mixed, administer uh, to respond a total score is sum of uh, the score of each item. This we have already seen how a Likert scale is uh, being scored. So in case of uh, to administer a pool of statements on a group of respondents who are similar to the population on whom the scale will be used. For example, if we want to study the attitude of housewives, the pool should be administered on a group of housewives with similar background to our final population. So uh, I mean to say who you are administering and it has to be in a group which is almost a representative of the population which you intend to study. To the assign the scale values to the degrees of agreement or disagreement with each item, the particular values may differ from one researcher to another. Sometimes one may adopt the values one, two, three, four, five, and sometimes it may be a plus two, plus one, and which we have already seen. To calculate a total attitude for each respondent using the same scaling procedure, the distribution of the total scores then used to refine the list of items. And this is uh, called as item analysis. We have seen uh, item analysis is an essential step of uh, a Likert scale. While uh, maybe a point about the item analysis, to analyze the responses, uh, maybe to and select uh, for the scale those items which most clearly differentiate between the highest and the lowest scores. This can be done uh, by um, mostly dividing the respondents into the high and low scoring categories. The high scorers uh, are assumed to be with favorable attitudes, and the low uh, scorers. Uh, are taken for uh, the least favorable ones. If the statement is a good one, then uh, it is safe to expect uh, that uh, the mean score for the favorable group would be greater than the mean score for unfavorable group. If the mean scores across the two groups for an item are found nearly equal or equal, nearly equal or equal, then the statement can be dropped from the scale uh, because it's not going to help you out in measuring what you intend to measure. One can take the high group as uh, the top 20 percent of all total scores and the low group uh, as the lowest uh, 25 uh, percent. <clears throat> the QSORT technique uh, 
it's a few sort scaling is a rank order uh, scaling technique uh, wherein the respondents are asked to sort the presented objects into the piles based on similarity according to a specified criterion such as preference, attitude, perception, etc. The respondents may be requested to enunciate uh, their images of their ideal product and current product. Respondents may be given a large number of statements which ranges from 50 to 100 and respondents arrange the attributes along a scale of least liking to most preferred. So in case of a uh, QSort technique, it's a, uh, uh, and while you're looking at uh, this uh, scale, this kind of uh, scaling it, it, or the technique, uh, you can see it is uh, quite, it's faster and less tedious for uh, subjects than paired comparison measures. It also forces a subject to confirm to quarters at each point of the scale. So as to yield, almost normal or a quasi-normal distribution. This kind of uh, Q-score uh, scaling or uh, technique is in case of it used extensively in case of marketing research and is uh, to derive clusters of individuals who display similar preferences uh, thus representing unique market segments. And the, you, if you look at the advertisements, how they focus on uh, ap appearing to be appealing to a certain section of the population. Uh, if you look at, uh, maybe suppose, for example, if you look at the Indian uh, market where household products or even toiletries have been advertised, uh, I'm not sure I have seen any advertisement of soap uh, toilet soap, just simple toilet soap uh, being advertised without a female in it. Because every uh, household, it is uh, quite the market, uh, people or the advertising uh, sites know that it is uh, the female who is going to buy uh, soap. So it is there, they want it, their advertisement to be appealing to females rather than men, because I'm sure they are quite sure about uh, who is going to make the decision about uh, the uh, buying of a soap. So that is the kind of uh, technique which is used uh, in case of a Q-sort Q scale. So Q-sort card, imagine being asked to complete a survey about your pizza preferences. This is another example. The soap is another one. All of the survey questions are then presented on a separate cards. The challenge in a QSort is that you have to move each statement card to one and only one slot on the QSort board. So we have seen this all already. That is the, if you are looking at, if your research is intending to uh, identify uh, clusters in a population, so QSort is one of the most favorable technique which you could rely upon uh, because that is going to help you out because this is uh, how you are going to uh, do it because this will be the most appropriate method in case of if you are going to identify if your research is uh, expecting to identify clusters in your uh, study population. So the next will be multi-dimensional uh, scaling and uh, it consists of group of uh, analytical techniques which are used to study consumer attitudes related to perceptions and preferences uh, it is used to study the major attributes of a given class of products perceived by the consumers in considering the product and by which they compare the different ranks. So uh, multidimensional scaling, again, it is it has been applied uh, in advertising and uh, market segmentation and vendor evaluation of uh, selection of uh, so an appropriate- you, sir. Uh, Yes, please. Actually, I think your slide format has been changed. Yeah, yeah, I think that would be fine. Thank you, sir. Light format is changed. Okay, sorry. So now it's fine, sorry. sir. 
okay all right to select an appropriate attitude uh, measurement uh, i'm sorry Hello, I think so. Your connection is lost. I think he had a power cut. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I'm back. I'm back. I, I'm connected to the mobile now. Now it won't be an issue. All right. Okay. So, uh, am I audible now? Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. 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 Fine. Thank you. Your slides, are, your slides are not visible, sir, so far. Just a moment, just a moment. I'm look, I'm going. Take your time, sir. Take your time. Okay. This is is it visible now? Not yet, sir. Yes, sir. Now it is visible. Okay, now I'm connected from the mobile, so uh, maybe I'll disable my video so that it runs faster. Okay. I hope it runs. All right. So uh, it consists of the multi dimensional scale we have already seen, and it consists of isolated uh, to perceptions and preferences. And it is used to study the major attribute product and by which they compare the different ranks. One of uh, an appropriate uh, selection of an appropriate uh, tail depends on the. <clears throat> so just to interrupt you. I'm sorry, the project. Uh, by, by which I mean to say is uh, how and what kind so just of to interrupt are you going to use? Is uh, your research strategy? Your voice is, is not coming sir, properly, it's breaking. So actually, it is not synchronized. Yes. Yes, please go ahead. Yes, yes, please. Oh, 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 just, just give me a minute. Now, am I audible? Yes, sir, this is perfect now. Okay, all right, all right. I, I don't think I will require much more. Uh, it's not going to be very, very long, but let us stay on the mobile for a while because we don't know there will be more power cuts in between. So, uh, the okay, the selection of the attitude scale, stage, and size of the research project, by which I mean to say is uh, if your study is an extensive one and if uh, the criterion you intend to measure is. Uh, something which is not been measured, which is very new. Suppose, for example, you advise everyone to use the scales available only in the market. Uh, you are going to measure something which is already been measured before. Uh, so how uh, are we going to encourage uh, innovations or something new in uh, maybe in science? If you are going, you are not going to discourage anybody to bring something new to the table because if that is the condition, then uh, the world will be will not be having any uh, invention or uh, inventions uh, 
in the future inventions are going to be uh, not there. And so uh, in case if your study permits by means, I by permits, I mean uh, by time, by financial uh, funding. So if it permits, it is better if you are going to measure a criterion, which is uh, if you are not, because as a researcher, you have the freedom to choose the scale which you are going to uh, use. So if suppose, for example, as a researcher, you are not comfortable with a particular scale, you always have uh, the option to create a scale. But remember, it needs to be uh, valid, reliable, and at the same time, it needs to be standardized. And if time permits, go for it. There is no harm in it. But there needs to have, because it is not as simple as just creating, because while I say you can create your own, uh, the students, PG students here, kindly do not take it. Uh, the uh, questionnaire which we allow PG students to create and get it content validated by few of the teachers and go for it because that is just a step. It is not a standardized process and uh, it is just very, very um, minute part of it. So uh, the cost of developing and implementing the instrument, reliability and validity of the instrument, and the static, statistical analysis necessary, which has to be kept in mind. Test and scale, QSOR technique, and the semantic uh, differences scale are preferred for preliminary investigation studies. The like scale is used for item analysis. For specific attributes, the semantic difference scale is very appropriate. The overall, this semantic difference scale is simple in concept, and results obtained are comparable with more complex one dimensional methods and uh, the going to the limitations of attitude measurement scale uh, if you look at uh, the measurements i'm sorry the limitations of attitude measurement scale the main limitation of uh, these tools is the emphasis on describing attitudes rather than predicting behavior i think initially itself i said this because many times uh, while you are looking at uh, the analysis uh, part of the studies done by students and you look at the thing what is being measured is attitude and many times the student uh, confuses themselves with predicting behavior. So it is you have measured the attitude and not uh, predicting uh, behavior of a particular uh, group. This is primarily because of lack of models that describe the role of attitudes in uh, predicting behavior. So to, I think uh, we have uh, seen what, uh, how attitude scales are used, what are the kinds of attitude scales uh, which exist and how these scales are utilized for research. And at the same time, the advantages and disadvantages of each uh, uh, type of scales which are used mainly for uh, research purposes. So to conclude, uh, attitude assessment uh, using rating scale questionnaire questions are easy to understand and implement. As I think initially itself, we said <clears throat> it is one of the easiest method available. That is why it is very extensively used offers a comparative analysis of quantitative data within the target sample for researchers to make well-informed decisions. One of the main uh, advantage of using a uh, rating scale is the data which you have obtained from a group, it is easily quantifiable. So because you already have it in numbers or otherwise maybe in uh, dichotomous answers like yes or no, or like dislike, agree, disagree, and, uh, and, uh, ask, and so on. Using graphic rating scales, it is easy for researcher to create surveys as they consume, least time to configure. So I think that's all from uh, about what, and I, I just want uh, to answer some of the questions a participant would like to have. And uh, I think this is where I, I should stop sharing so that I'll be able to see the participants and uh, maybe address some of the questions if they have. Yes, please. I hope you are all you, here. Dr. Prati, sir, for such a vibrant and uh, a concise session. And, uh, and, uh, and during and the I'm, session, I'm you have explained many things about the scale and the different scale has been explained very well about their uh, composition and the precaution a student has to follow while developing a scale. 
uh, yeah, it is very much uh, known that scale are very much uh, very commonly used in our day-to-day -day life also whenever we are going to the market or whether we are in the academics. And they are being most preferred because they are easy to use and uh, they are inexpensive and many other advantage are, advantages are associated to them. Now, uh, during the session, uh, we have heard that you have discussed many scale like Gutman, Thruston, semantic differential scale, summative scales, and, and many more like at scale like QSORT and many other things. And they are very popular in the research, specifically for postgraduate research. Uh, you have touched upon about item analysis that is very integral part to establish the psychometric properties of the scale. And uh, it was quite an enlightening session to hear you, uh, though it, uh, this topic required more times. So I can understand limitation. It is difficult to explain everything in uh, such a short span of time. And uh, we will definitely call you some other times to take your expertise on such topics. Now the floor is open. I request all the audience who are listening and who are on the board to contribute or to ask any queries if they have regarding uh, attitude skills. Uh, they can ask directly to Dr. Atish or they can contribute if they want to. So floor is open, please. And I'm uh, to the participants and the organizers. I'm extremely sorry for uh, the interruption due to power because it happens sometimes, and it happens for a minute. But the interruption of the internet connection is going to be taking two minutes to reconnect again. And I think there is one uh, question in the chat box that is how to differentiate attitude and behavior. I I'll just say it once. That is attitude just form part of the behavior and behavior and attitudes are not the same attitude be attitude is just part of the behavior measuring attitude you cannot predict a person's behavior it is just a part so i think that answers that any other questions audience please you can raise the queries or you can ask the question straight away to dr atis uh, if you have anything or uh, you would like to add anything from your own experience so that will be more interesting to hear you I know I can understand it's a very dry topic and uh, and it's in the afternoon at four o'clock. Yes, sir. Should have been will a... will go down these times. Yeah, yeah, I know. I can yeah. understand. And probably if had it been a physical session, people would have been more active. But it was interesting to hear you, sir. Uh, there were yeah. quite an interesting thing you have added in this concise and crisp presentations. And uh, definitely, uh, uh, especially whosoever postgraduate students are connected to us, uh, must get benefit out of it and uh, definitely they start using the things though I, I earlier said you that it is very difficult to cover such a big topics that is very interesting as well and uh, cover various domains uh, while developing and while using but yes one uh, crisp and concise message you conveyed that students should avoid developing the scale during postgraduate because that that's one part basically and somehow they are not able to check the psychometric properties uh, like reliability and content validity of, and all those things. So better if they prefer a standardized tool, which is publicly available or uh, low cost or in inexpensive, it will be more fruitful for them. So that is, I think, one take home message from your session to the postgraduate students. And uh, if there is no, no doubt or no queries from the audience side, uh, I once again, thank you, sir, for uh, connecting with us and uh, sparing your valuable times with us for uh, taking such a uh, uh, such a you know um, uh, big topic in a very concise and clear manner uh, we looking forward you to call in person to our institution whenever the time permit us and uh, we'll take your expertise on such kind of topics in future as well one one more Thank question you. i think sir it is there in the chat box uh, just a moment just a moment i'm i'm just i'm just looking at how to use images or emojis in likert scale i think visual analog scale if you look at uh, for pain perception, if you look at the vision analog scale, you will see the faces and mostly it is used in case of pediatric uh, pain perception studies. We have seen so many of the visual analog scale, the facial expression of the baby or even uh, newborns are uh, being used. So you can look at have a look at that. And I just used emoji just for the sake of it. The word is not emoji. It is uh, you can see the visual analog scale uh, for pain perception where it is available. And they, it looks like smileys or emojis on that scale. So I just used that. Please don't uh, uh, take home that uh, word which I just used. Please don't. So uh, I think, uh, Dr. Rajesh, I'm really grateful uh, that uh, 
I could be part of this and uh, I'm sure. And uh, again, uh, this, the slides, uh, I think uh, a mention of uh, Kirti, who is our tutor, who helped me out in making the slides uh, with me would be, uh, I'm really grateful to her. And I, I, I know she's not around, but I still, I just want the audience to know that somebody has done it. So thank you. And uh, thank you, Dr. Smriti Arora and Dr. Belsi. I think Dr. Belsi's one huge responsibility is over because she was having such a tension to get my PPTs in time and she was worried. She gave me a call somewhere uh, early in the morning at 6.30 and I, I didn't know which world I was. So. Uh, thank you, Dr. Belsi, for keeping me on my toes and getting it done. And uh, if I missed that call, I would have never completed that on that day itself. So thank you. Thank you, sir, from our side and uh, from uh, all the faculty and uh, uh, you know teaching team from College of Nursing, Ames Rishikes. And uh, thank you, thank you, thank you, honor thank you, you joined us today. Thank you so much. Thank you, and all the best to the participants. And I'm sure Nursing's World is very small. We'll come face to face very soon somewhere. Thank you. Thank you, thank you sir. Thank Participant, you. one request, please. Uh, fill the feedback survey. You uh, have received a link link on in the chat chat box, so you can fill and return it to us, so that uh, it will help us to uh, uh, revise the things or to improvise the thing in future. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, and bye bye. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much, Thank Dr. Pradeesh, for taking the time out. And uh, at the end, I think there was some uh, technical error from our side also. We're not able to share your introductory slide. No, I that's just like, no, 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 that's very fine. That's very fine. <laughs> I would just like to know that. To oh, have okay. Thank you. That the sir is a very good personality you. and sir has received a lot of awards and honors, like Commonwealth Professional Fellow of Royal Society for Public Health and a member of Central Mental Health Authority from Government of India. And his keen interest is in mental health and intersections in health and phenomenology. And we are highly grateful to you, sir. Thank you so much. And uh, thank you, thank you. Keep up your sense of humor and wit. Thank you so much. Thank, thank, thank you, thank you. It was a pleasure. Thank you so much. Okay. See you all soon somewhere. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank bye -bye. you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Good day, sir. Thank you. Thank you. You too, Rajesh. Thank you. Yeah, Mr. Gurdeep, can you please stop recording?